deadly native carnivore. We'll find a spot somewhere around here on this rock outcrop. These two ecologists are on a special mission. They're out to save one of Australia's threatened species. Very little is known about the spotted tail quoll. Threatened, quite rare. There isn't a great deal of information on them. Studying such an elusive and shy creature was always going to take a special kind of cunning. We've taken advantage of a natural behaviour of the animal in its ability to travel through the landscape and we quickly build up a picture of where, where the species is. They've turned to perhaps an unlikely source of information in their quest to understand the most intimate details of quolls. This isn't any old jobby, it's a bush nugget from a spotted tail quoll. And in the right hands, it can reveal the secrets of a quoll's life. Uh, we've been able to tackle this top section of the study area, but... James Dawson and Andrew Claridge work with the Endangered Species Unit of the New South Wales Department of Environment and Conservation. Good access off the road. Really, you've got two options. You can either come in here off the Barry Way and that's steep. They began their mission back in 2001 in the southern end of Kosciuszko National Park. Their study site was a huge area, seven kilometres square, over very rugged terrain. And their first challenge was to catch some quolls. These shy little animals can be very difficult to trap, but we're in luck. We've got one. What a beautiful creature. Yeah, they're pretty fantastic, aren't they? This quarrelsome little fellow is covered in scars from fighting with other quolls. All right, Fabulous. absolutely. Yeah. Once James has got the animal in the bag, what we might do is get you to run that microchip scanner over it. Yeah, sure. So we can identify who it is. Okie dokie, uh, 0606 4339. Okay. All up, they've caught 49 quolls in the study uh, area. 2.7. Thank you. It was a healthy population that seemed to be coping well with life in a national park. 72.7. But trapping alone couldn't tell James and Andrew all they needed to know for the quoll's long-term survival. Oh, oh, okay. So he's a bit stressed, so I think we better let him go. Okay. Fantastic. What a beautiful little fellow. Somehow they had to find out what the quolls oh, were eating. And there's only one way to find that out. You can see here we've got uh, oh. a tiger quoll <laughs> latrine site, which is... A which latrine? Is a latrine site, a toilet. So yeah. how can you tell that they're from a spotted tail quoll and not some other animal? Uh, it's, well, it takes a, a bit of practice to get your eye in. And as you can see on some of these ones, there's a, a very distinctive twisted cylinder shape about them. Yeah, amazing. Each scat is packed full of hairs and bones from animals the quolls have eaten, but identifying those hairs and bones is a specialist skill. There you are, Paul, you can take that to Victoria for us. No worries. James and Andrew send the quoll scats to one of the very few scat analysts in Australia. A woman who's built an impressive reputation on dung. She works from home in a secluded corner of Victoria, and her name is Barbara Triggs. G'day. Hi. You must be Barbara. Paul. Pleased to meet you. Nice to see you. Uh, and you've come down from Cozzy. Yeah, in fact, uh, bought a little present for you. Oh. <laughs> Shall we see what's in it? Collected just yesterday. Let's have a look. Right. Yeah. OK. One of James's. Uh, well, James didn't do it. No, I think he called it. Is this the washing area? Yes. When Barbara gets a new sample, she has to give it a good wash before she can analyse it. And how many scats would you analyse in a year? Thousands. Thousands, really? So you're after the hair, that's the basis of that's your work? the basis of it. Washing the scats not only cleans them so they're safe to handle, it also breaks them up, releasing the hairs inside. What's the next step in the process once you've done this? Once it's dry, then we take it in there and look at it under the microscope. Can I have a look? Yes. Okay. Good. 
It's amazing just how much hair is bound up in a single scat. Barbara's techniques are remarkably low tech, but the results are impressive. There we go. So what does this one look like? This looks very much like brush tail possum. In cross section, the hair of different mammal species is quite distinctive. Oh wow, that's really quite pretty, isn't it? <laughs> and the quoll's favorite food turns out to be brush tailed possum. Trap closed. Oh, we got one. Back out at Kosciuszko National Park, the quoll study was going well. This Pretty. one knows the drill. Until the devastating fires of 2003. Well, Andrew and I came back down here about three weeks after the fire, and I nearly cried because it looked to my eyes that the place had been nuked. The fire had completely destroyed the home ranges of all the study animals. Your first reaction is one of total dismay and you wonder how on earth anything could have survived. With the trees burnt to a cinder, the brush-tailed possums had disappeared with them. If any quolls had survived the fire, their favourite food was gone. Starvation was a real possibility. We didn't know what to expect, but we had very low expectations of animals having actually survived. Yeah, it did. We've got some rock coming up ahead of us here. But James and Andrew were not about to just give up. They started searching for signs of the quolls among the devastation. There we go. That. Oh, excellent. To their utter amazement, they found the quolls' unmistakable calling cards. Bag these ones? Yep. Initially, we were surprised that they survived at all and subsequently we've been studying them and realised that they've recovered very quickly after the fire. So how did the quolls survive the aftermath of the devastating fires? Surely there was nothing else for them to eat. Once again, the team turned to Barbara and her analytical skills with poo. Slowly, Barbara teased out a fascinating answer. It was a truly remarkable story of adaptability. After the fires, a flourish of new grass growth created a surge in rabbit numbers. So instead of feasting on tree-loving possums, the quolls switched to a banquet of bunnies. And what we've discovered out of that work is that the animal is a very resilient species and it has a range of adaptations which enable it to persist in these environments that are going to get fire from time to time. Barbara's scat analysis uncovered several other surprises about the diet of quolls. And one of them was buried deep inside the little package I'd taken to her. But have a look at this one. It's something different. That is different. What is it? It's platypus. Platypus? Really? How on earth is a quoll catching platypus? Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> what amazing creatures. Yeah. So next time you're in the bush, keep your eyes on the ground. You might be walking through a quoll's bathroom. And this might be all you will ever see of this fascinating creature. <laughs>